Hi guys and welcome back to another Study Clicks video. Jenny here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Higher Level 2020 paper and we're going to be looking at paper 1 question 4. So this question covers the topics of functions and differentiation and specifically we're going to be looking at some key terminology that appears in calculus such as turning points and points of inflection. So let's get started. So this question overall is worth 25 marks and it's broken down into three parts, part A, B and C, with them being worth 15 marks, 5 marks and 5 marks respectively. So let's get cracking into reading the question, we'll start with part A. So they give us some information at the beginning of the question, notice that this isn't belonging to any specific part, so this applies to every single part of the question. So, question 4 reads, the diagram below shows two functions f of x and g of x. The function f of x is given by the formula, f of x is equal to x cubed plus kx squared plus 15x plus 8, where k is an element of z, so k is an integer, and x is an element of r, so x is a real number. Fantastic, so let's read part A. Part A says, given that f dash of 3 is equal to minus 12, show that k is equal to minus 9, where f dash of 3 is the derivative of f of x at x equals 3. So highlighting the key information there, want to show that k is equal to minus 9. This is what the question is asking us to do, where they tell us that f dash of 3 is the derivative of f of x at x is equal to 3. I love these types of questions because you know when you're wrong. If we don't get minus 9 out here, we know that we've gone wrong. They also mean that even if we don't get this part out, we still have the answers that we can use later on. So let's get cracking into it. So I'm gonna write down what they give us for f of x in the top of the question, which was x cubed plus kx squared plus 15x plus eight. So they tell us that given that f dash evaluated three is equal to minus 12, this relates to f dash of x, right? F dash of x evaluated at three. So first things first, what we should do is get the derivative. My plan going forward, the way I see this question going, is we're going to get the derivative, we're going to sub in 3 and equate it to minus 12 and see if we can get k from that. So let's get the derivative. So differentiating f of x, we can differentiate each term individually. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, so it's going to be plus the derivative of kx squared, which is going to be plus 2kx plus the derivative of 15x, which is going to be 15, and the derivative of eight with respect to x is going to be zero because it's a constant. So this is what we have as our answer for f dash of x. Now we go to the next piece of information they give us from the question. They tell us that the derivative evaluated of three is equal to minus 12. We're going to sub in three for x. So everywhere I have an x in this expression, I'm going to put in three. And they tell us that this should be equal to minus 12. So as you can see, we have an equation here, and we only have one unknown, which is k. Everything else is numbers that we know. 3 times 3 to be squared, that's something to be evaluated. 15 is something just to be evaluated. So k here is our only variable. So it's clear to see if we arrange this equation and get k on its own, we'll be able to find its value. Let's simplify this. Let's multiply out some of our terms on our left-hand side. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, plus 3 by 2 is 6, so plus 6k, plus 15 is equal to minus 12. So let's keep k on the left and bring everything that's not k onto the right hand side. And then let's just evaluate the right hand side. It's minus 54. So divide across by six gives us an answer of minus nine. We get the same answer that they asked us to. So usually if it's a show type of a question, I usually kind of write off some sort of a conclusion. So after this, I'm just gonna write down the words as required. Like I said, this part was 15 marks. And in my opinion, a very easy 15 marks. This is a very straightforward question, just differentiate the expression, sub in the equation they give you and simplify to get a value for k, which they already give you at the beginning. So a very, a very nice 15 marks. Let's move on to part b and see what that has in store for us. So part b, it says the function g of x is the line that passes through the two turning points of f of x is equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x plus 8, as shown in the previous page. So the function that they gave us. Highlighting key information, g of x is the line that passes through the two turning points. What is a turning point? A turning point is a point where 
the derivative is equal to zero. This is a piece of information that you need to know. This is just general theory from calculus. This won't be in your log tables. There are certain definitions for things, such as what a turning point is that you need to remember going into your exam. So the question asks us then to find the equation of g of x. g of x is a line. That means we're going to be working with the equation of a line. And we know from our log tables, so it would be on page 19, that the equation for the line is given by where the slope is given by the following. A line is a function. We know in order to get an equation of a line, we need two points. They tell us already that the function passes through the two turning points. Let's go back up to our diagram. As you can see, f of x here is our cubic and g of x here is our line. It says that g of x passes through the two turning points of f of x. So we're going to mark in where g of x and f of x intersect, which are in these two points. Just a quick note, what makes it a turning point? So the derivative is zero, right? So what is the derivative? The derivative is the slope of the curve at that point. So if I was to draw a tangent to that curve, a tangent is a line, that line would have a slope of zero. So if I'm to get a ruler and line it up, so just on the top turning point, I have a ruler here and I've lined it up just so it's touching the curve exactly at that one point. That's what a tangent is, right? It's a line that touches the curve at one point only. The point that we're choosing is this turning point. You can see if I draw that straight line, it has a slope of zero. The angle it makes with the x-axis is zero degrees. And I can do the exact same thing at the bottom. You can see that it's a horizontal line, so it has zero slope. So we're right in knowing that f dash of x is equal to zero. This means then we have some key information in how to get those two points. They are the points where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to use that knowledge to find their coordinates and then use those two coordinates that we get to get the equation of the line. So what is f of x? f of x is equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x plus 8. Remember the condition that we're working with is that f dash of x is equal to 0, so our derivative is 0. So let's differentiate this expression. You can do it again or you can just use your expression from part a if you want. Once we differentiate we get 3x squared minus 18x plus 15. And remember now, our condition that we're working with is that these points are when this derivative is equal to zero. So let's equate it to zero. So as you can see now, we just have a quadratic equation. So we can solve this really easily. We can either use the minus b formula or we can factorize. First things first, I'm noticing here every single term is divisible by three. So let's divide across by three. And I think once you divide across by three, it's much easier to see that you can just factorize this really simply. So we're going to end up with the following factors. So it's going to be x minus 5 times x minus 1. Checking that we're right. If we multiply minus 5 by minus 1, we get plus 5. And then if we add minus 5x and minus 1x, we get minus 6x, which is what we need. So that means then we have two points which have x coordinates. x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 1. So from this now, we need to get our y coordinates. So going back up to our diagram for a quick minute, we found that our two x coordinates are x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5, so 1 will be the closer one, so we have the following, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 5. So our diagram has our two turning points on the right-hand side of the y-axis, so on the positive side of the x-axis. And the two values we get for x are both positive, right? We have 1 and 5, so that makes sense. If we got an answer like minus 5, you know, 0 is here. So that wouldn't really make any sense because it's on the wrong side of the axis. How do we get our y-coordinate now? Our y-coordinate is given by the value of f of x, x equal to 1 and x equal to 5, right? Because they lie on the curve. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub in 1 and 5 into f of x to get our y coordinates. And just taking a closer look at our graph, we expect the value for y for x is equal to 1 to be positive and the value for y when x is equal to 5 to be negative, just based on this graph. So let's keep that in mind when we're doing out our answers. If we don't get something that looks like that, we've probably made a mistake somewhere. So let's go on now and get those points. So subbing our two coordinates into f of x, which just a reminder is given here by x cubed minus 9x squared plus 15x plus 8. Um, let's start with x is equal to 1. So I'm going to sub that into f of x. So we have f of 1. So we have f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 to be squared plus 15 times 1 plus 8. You can do this in your head if you want. 1 cubed and 1 squared, they just equal to 1. So it's just simple addition or subtraction, or you can just do it out in your calculator. That's what I'm going to do. So we're going to have 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 to be squared. 
So putting that into our calculator, we have 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 to be squared plus 15 times 1 plus 8, and that comes out to be an answer of 15. Fantastic, and we're going to do the exact same thing now for x is equal to 5. So we're going to have f of 5 is equal to 5 cubed minus 9 times 5 to be squared plus 15 times 5 plus 8. So once again, going back into our calculator. we get an answer of minus 17. And that makes sense. So remember earlier on, we expected the coordinate for x is equal to 1 to be positive. So we have plus 15. So that makes sense. And for when x is equal to 5, we expect it to have a minus y. And in this case, we have minus 17. So that all makes sense. So let's write down um, the coordinates of our turning points now. So I'm just going to write tp for turning points. So we have 1, 15 and 5 minus 17. Fantastic, um, but we are not done here. So if we go back up to the question, the question is asking us to find the equation of the line that passes through the two turning points. So we have the two coordinates, and once we have two coordinates of a line, it's really, really easy to get the equation of the line. So g of x can be found using the equation of the line, which is given by y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, um, where m is the slope of our line given by m is equal to y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1. So it's our y coordinates minus our x coordinates. So let's do that for our two coordinates of our line on g of x. So we have 115 and 5 minus 17. So subbing those in, if I call um, 115 x1 y1 and 5 minus 17 x2 y2. So that gives us minus 17 minus 15 divided by 5 minus 1. And that's equal to minus 32 over 4, which simplifies down to give us minus 8. Fantastic, so that is the slope of our line. So we now have everything we need to get the equation of our line. So subbing in m and x1 and y1, we have y minus 15 is equal to minus 8 times x minus 1, expanding everything out. And rearranging, we can write that the equation of our line is given by y is equal to minus 8x plus 23, and this is g of x. Fantastic, so that is the end of part B. Quite a lot of work for five marks, but I guess if you know your calculus terminology, such as, like, in this case, turning points going into your exam, this part should have been completely fine for you. It was just finding two coordinates, subbing those into the equation of a line, and... Hey presto, there you go. Fantastic, so let's now move on to part C. Part C again is five marks. And the question says, show that the graph of g of x contains the point of inflection of f. What is the point of inflection? This is another key piece of information that you need to know from calculus in order to do this question. So you need to know this going into the exam. The point of inflection is the point at which the second derivative of f is equal to zero. So what we're going to do, we're going to find what the point of inflection is and see if it's on g. Let's get the second derivative of x. I'm just going to use what we have for the first derivative from part b, which was 3x squared minus 18x plus 15. By the way, in an actual exam, this piece of information here that I have for point of inflection, so that f double dash is equal to zero, I would have this written in the square boxes. I wouldn't write it off to the side. I'd make sure that I'm telling my examiner that I know what it is. I'm defining it for them and I'm making it super, super clear what it is I'm doing in the question. Just as a quick note, let's differentiate f of x again. We're gonna have f double dash of x. We're just gonna differentiate each term with respect to x again. And we get six x minus 18. But our point of inflection is when the second derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to equate this to zero. As you can see, we just have an equation for x. So solving for x, we end up with x is equal to three. To find our y-coordinate, we put it back into f of x. Writing down what the definition of f of x was. f of x is equal to x cubed minus nine times x squared plus 15x plus eight. Subbing in three, we get three cubed minus nine times three to be squared plus 15 times three plus eight. I'm going to do that out on our calculator get an answer of minus one. We have now the point of inflection is three minus one. And now we're gonna check, is it on g of x? So we had g of x is equal to minus eight x plus 23. Everywhere I have an x, I'm gonna sub in three and I'm gonna put in minus one for g of x. So that means we have minus one is equal to minus eight times three plus 23. Multiplying that out, minus one is equal to minus 24 plus 23. So that means we end up with minus one is equal to minus one. So this is true. That means that three minus one satisfies g of x, which means it lies on g of x. So I'm gonna write true. That implies that the point of inflection is on g of x as required. 
So I think it's always best to just explicitly state, since I got this, that means it's true. So that means the point of inflection is on it. That was five marks. Key piece of information was knowing what a point of inflection is. Okay, cool. Well, that's the end of this question. I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Bye.